question. How do I put the lecture together? I'll let one of you. Okay. I, most of what they said, mm -hmm. I would include in this. Okay. So all those things, yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, the study part, the initial question, let me just get information in my head. And so that's yeah. how I like to approach. And, and so you start doing you, all that stuff. <laughs> but when it comes to actually, okay, what am I going to do about a lecture? Mm -hmm. So like Tom, okay, let's go and what are the important bits? Mm -hmm. Is there a difficult passage? Is there a portion of the book that students are probably going to have questions on? What's the stuff I absolutely need to cover? Because uh, like you said, in, in a large book, if you can't go verse by verse, you've got to make a decision, well, what am I going to cover? How much of it am I going to do big picture? And I like to, well, actually this comes out of, as I go through, now that I've got the information, or I've got the book back in my head, what are the important bits? Um, and so I, I'm not afraid to say in Matthew, sometimes I'll cover a whole section. I like to teach by section, sometimes in a whole book, because a section has a message. So sometimes I can do that. Sometimes I will go and we'll deal with one idea. Sometimes maybe it's a little bit topical that, you know, in this particular book, he's got a theme or he's got a topic. Uh, and so to do a, very, a bunch of different things, but that comes out of, as I go through, all right, well, that's probably going to be important. That's probably going to be important. And, and then prayerfully, okay, well, what for this class, uh, a couple years ago I did Galatians in Colorado Springs, and then I came back and I did it. Uh, <clears throat> well, I was in Colorado Springs, and I was also in uh, uh, ESPS. And the, the same thing, okay, I've got, it's the same book, but as I'm studying through it, this is the bit for ESBS, this is the bit for Colorado Springs. Um, so for me, that, that, that's a part of putting the lecture together. Uh, and then I usually try and, uh, from that I'll mind map, that helps me. I'm actually a very logical, and when I write my notes, they're very systematic and outline form. Sometimes I do teach off, though, um, mind mapping. But in finding the, the important bits, okay, well, what, what's, what are the important bits, and then what do I need to cover? Uh, so once I figure out, or I, I feel like the, here's some of the, the important bits that I have to cover, that's when I'll go back and I'll do a little more research. I might refer to the languages. I might uh, read some articles. I always like to read something for um, something new mm -hmm. in, in a book, especially books that you have taught for a long time or a lot of, like, it's, it's good to get something else, even if it's something that I read and I go, eh. Wasn't that great an article? Uh, it, someone may ask the question, and it's, it's just useful, even if you say, you know, don't worry about that. Uh, so that's the part of putting the lecture together. I really like mind mapping. It helps me find the big bits or the important bits. Again, the, the big bit may be I need to cover um, Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount as a whole. But I might do, you know, something small, in there as well. It might be verse by verse, but again, what's going to be important in that? Uh, and then try and think, I want to give them things that they may not necessarily be able to find on their own. So relative to background, um, I don't want to do the BRI for them. Uh, that's their job. I don't want to chart for them. I don't want to give them everything. We got three. We only got three hours in class. And if you're going to be able to find this by charting, maybe point it out. I can realize, okay, I can point it out. I don't forget when you go through this, you're going to see a list. Uh, but think in terms of the method in how is, as I think about this, how am I going to demonstrate this by saying or using the method? Uh, but yeah, most of that, that's the next step is then finding the bits, be they big or small, and then going to do more work on those. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to add much. But I would say this about the background is sometimes when I'm giving a lecture and I go over BRIs, sometimes that's the time when people really like perk up. They really want those answers because it's very applicable to their assignment. But another time, like if you give them everything for their BRI, you kind of take away a desire for them to want to go and work on their BRI outside of the class. If you give them everything, they don't necessarily want to work on that anymore. I've, I've found that to be true, so I don't like going over BRI bit by bit by bit. Now maybe some of the confusing stuff for sure, but I agree. It's a headache. <laughs> and of course they're going to want it, but we also want them to work outside of class. Mm -hmm.
Well, if there's a lot of blur between those <laughs> first, uh, well, between all three well, of them, three actually. Of them, <laughs> uh, but I also do mind map, particularly, uh, I, that's when I start kind of the organizational phase, which I guess is more towards the second point, uh, in that I will start with, if it's a three-hour lecture, I'll have hour one, two, three, and I, I have a mind mapping uh, software thing so that I can find things whenever and wherever I find them. I write them down and then I can drag them around to organize. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like that because it's better to me than paper because you can't drag on paper. Uh, you know, so I can, it allows me, it allows me, because you never find the things, at least I don't, you don't find them in the order that you need them. You seem to like yes. find things while you're looking for something else. Yes. And, and so mind mapping allows me to like, just write that stuff down and then later I can just drag it around and say, okay, well, this is how I want, and this will, this I think I can do in one hour, and this I can do in another hour. And, and so for organization, I love my mind mapping program. Now once I'm done with that, I usually don't use it in my actual presentation, uh, because there's usually just too much, and I just don't work that way, period. So, but as far as preparation goes, and as far as putting together what I want to do and when and what, you know, hourly goals, all that kind of stuff. I mean, I find mind mapping really useful for that, uh, especially using software where I can uh, change my mind a lot uh, and just drag it around, and, you know, and say, okay, that looks a lot more realistic. Uh, you know, so I do that as well. Um, and also, during this stage of things, if there's something that I want them to remember, I tend to try to uh, spend a little time on um, cooking it down into a very short, clear statement, mm -hmm. uh, which that usually takes a little engineering. Like you write down a thought and go, eh, and then you, you tweak it and tweak it and tweak it. And my goal is always to get it as short as I possibly can. Uh, you know, and as clear as I possibly can, and as accurate as I possibly can, without it being too open or too closed, uh, you, you know, like, uh, so that usually takes a little bit of engineering, so I think in the second phase here, when I, when there's something there that I think I want people to really say, I will try to work on a statement, and that's usually something I'll put in a either overhead or on the whiteboard or something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and a lot of times those then can be key building blocks for the, the lecture, you know, like those will be like, uh, I don't know what you would say, uh, signposts along the way, you know, like those are key, key foundation stones usually for the lecture then that I will build off of and use to change the subject or use to, uh, you know, uh, that sort of thing. So I, I look for those kinds of things as I'm putting the lecture together to like, okay, first you need a coherent um, approach to the text. That help, mind mapping helps me get that. Then I will look at, okay, how do you get people from point A to point B to point C to point... And you look at ways to, to make those transitions. Now, mm -hmm. under fire, <laughs> uh, every lecture is different. Yeah. I'm not a... I don't do well as a uh, performance kind of public speaker where it's just like da 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 and there it is, you know. <laughs> that's really not my way, especially in SBS. That's always more of a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I, uh, yeah, that kind of stuff I don't mess with. But I, but if there's something I want to say in particular, that I do spend some time on mm -hmm. at this stage of the game, I think. And, yeah. Yes, oh, also, I like to follow... There's this discussion on whether or not you follow the author's uh, 
sequence mm -hmm. or not, I almost always do. Mm -hmm. the, the rare exception would be non-chronological books where you might want to help people with a Western mindset uh, deal with someone telling a story non-chronologically, because that throws a lot of people into the weeds, it seems like. But uh, normally, I think it's best to try to get into the mindset of the author. That's part of what you do in the first two steps, right. and, wa and walk them along in that. And so, yeah, as far as preparation goes, I have a strong prejudice towards laying it out the way the author did. Uh, you know, because he did it for a reason, I assume. So I don't want to assume I know how to do it better. <laughs> it takes a very extreme circumstance to get me to break away from his ordering of the topics. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, the other thing in that, once the mind map is there, and, uh, those again, those are just the pieces of the things I want to cover. So on that particular mind map, that may be one hour. That might be my whole day. Mm -hmm. And if it's my whole day, then I need to find out, well, what's going to be hour one, what's going to be hour mm -hmm. two, what's going to be hour three. So two things. That, the other thing I do with the mind map is I like to think about connections. So if I'm in a particular book of Paul, is there something that I can connect to the Old Testament? Is there something, other, another place in Paul? And help them see what would be an important literary context. Is it canonical? Is it, yeah, is there so that, so that it's not just, well, I'm in Thessalonians, and that's all I've got to work with, to help them see a, a broader picture and make connections. Um, so to think about that. And then in terms of actually organizing it, Titus has a, I've been using this for years, and I still do the lecture synopsis, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically what Tom's talking about. Is, uh, it makes you come up with an objective. Mm -hmm. uh, a for main message hour. for every hour. Mm -hmm. And I will do that. I, I will put the objective up on the whiteboard and I will spell it out that, so that they know from the very beginning you're gonna, all the notes you're taking you're going to be able to hang on something. So mm -hmm. the objective for this hour is right. and in the thinking about the objective the, it answers three questions. What am I going to cover? How am I going to cover it? And what do I want the result to be? So for Philippians chapter 2, that's going to be an entire hour. Well, the objective for this class is to look at Jesus as the ultimate example of humility and uh, service. Okay, that's what we're going to, How are we going to do that? By observing and interpreting the five key words that you have to define, Paul's use of Isaiah's suffering servant, uh, and um, you know, def well, key definitions, and then now, uh, what does Paul mean by mind? Okay. With the result that the, the class C, you know, that this is the primary example, or how Paul used, you know, whatever I want the result to be. And sometimes it changes. Sometimes it's um, the result I'm going for is what's the original author, or what the original readers were supposed to get, or sometimes I'll take it to, I really want the class, it's going to be more of a preach. So I want the class to get that the, the essence of discipleship is you are slaves of Isaiah's suffering servant. I mean, that's what I want them to come away with for Philippians 2. But that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. What am I going to say? How am I going to cover it? And then that automatically gives me the points for further study. And then thinking about the main message in one or two sentences. So I, and I think about, I've been verbally vomiting on them for 45 minutes to be able to turn to Matt and say, okay, Matt, what was this hour about? And Matt can then say, if he says something to the effect that, well, it really was about the nature of discipleship and serving, and it's about humility and service and self-sacrifice. Awesome. I covered it. So in terms of an organizing thing, I still use those, and they are great resources. Because that would, once, once, you get, once you get the, how am I going to cover that, it tells you what you need to study, and those would be the bullet points. That's actually the meat of your lecture, so all this other stuff that was running around your head from all this reading and studying, well, I know I need to unpack these five points because I said that was how I was going to get to my message. And it makes you think of a closing, it makes you think of, okay, well, if these are the five main points, how am I going to illustrate that? Uh, and me, I'm not a good illustrator. Some people, I mean, they, can, they do great at it. I'm not. I'm a content guy. So it forces me to then think 
it, and it's got a place for, am I reaching the kinesthetic people, am I reaching the visual people, am I reaching the audio, auditory people, uh, what's my, I call it the money lecture, the money illustration, what's that big one at the end that, you know, for me it's the puck in the box. I have people 20 years later say, you're still doing Gene in the pocket box? Yeah, I'm doing the pocket box. I haven't found anything better. It works. The man package? The, no, the man package is not me. <laughs> uh, Sally Jones. Uh, it was Sally Jones. The importance of prepositions. She took the pocket box and just ruined it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Don't so, be famous. <laughs> so those are incredibly valuable tools for me and I still use it. Yeah, we can get you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, send them to you and I actually like the old ones. The one of the first ones that Amy did. She revamped them um, and they put more categories in. You know, Amy, she's always making it bigger yeah. and better. And, and the new one just confuses me. But uh, the old one is just a little more straightforward. Uh, so you should send us on, on that note, I guess that's in this one and not the next, but well, in both, but one of the things I do at this point is I start making what I would call a punch list. Yes. In other words, I've got, uh, typically when I actually teach, I'll have my text with notes and a punch list, an hourly punch list. In other words, these are the non-negotiables that must be covered in this hour. Uh, and. I, I work that out because that that helps me in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't I want to repeat all that Mark did, but I would agree with what Mark just said. As far as like uh, by doing that, that helps me keep continuity of thought. It helps me to know, okay, I have done it now. Let's tie this thing off. Uh, I when I look at that, I can one I can look at that without having to stop and read. Mm -hmm. It's usually like three or four things in an hour is about all I really need to do. Uh, you know, and so I can, and it helps me with uh, questions as well, classroom management, but that's probably the next question. But uh, for preparation, it's important to have this list of what are the non-negotiables. For example, I got behind in Cambodia, uh, and so what I did was I just took my notes and tossed them, and I made a list. I went through the remaining text and I said, all right, what has to be talked about? I made a list with a verse reference by each one. I was doing a huge book. Uh, I forget which one was I doing. Uh, I don't know, Genesis, I think, or, or Exodus. No, I think it was Exodus. Anyway, something. And, and so I just made a list of like, all right, I got to talk about this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this event, this event, this event. I just made a list and said, okay, got two hours. There's, there's the list. And I said, all right, turn here, turn there. And we got through it with translation. But I mean, that to me is, is my most valuable tool as far as time management, classroom management, staying on topic. I mean, it does all those things. So I'm a huge fan of making a short short list. I mean, again, this is where it's harder to, to make a short list than it is to make a long list. I always start with a long list and it takes me a lot of work to get it down to a short list. Short lists are not easier, they're harder. Uh, and so, but I, I find that to be super helpful and it's helpful in my thinking and it's helpful in my delivery both. So. And off of that, just a little bit, think about your audience, too, because you may have been studying and have all this information that you want to get through, but your hour may not be an hour and 20 minutes because you didn't cut it down, and it's just not fair to them. So as much as it, like, pains you not to tell them about this cool Greek word that you know, please don't if it's going to keep them there forever past their time, respect their time. Um, I just mm -hmm. found that to be really important. <laughs> Which I am terrible at now, by the way. <laughs> Respect their time. <laughs> I try. But I, I have lost all ability for time management. <laughs> Which I need to get back. So. Um, one thing about this, though, I did think of, I want to say, is, is just everybody's difference in how you'll put it together as far as if you write verbatim, or if you write in bullet points, or how you write things down on the paper. Um, do what is comfortable. We'll get into delivery. If, if you write it out verbatim, great. Do not read it verbatim. Um, you'll put everybody to sleep. So you can do that and I've seen SBS teachers that do it and they do it really well. But it's only because they have to know verbatim where they're going to go with every single thing. And, um, yeah, they don't deliver it like that though. So if that's the way your mind works, that's great. If you're more of a bullet point kind of person, it's so much easier to read. Mm -hmm. I will suggest that version um, because it is it's a lot quicker 
But like I showed you guys, you guys already saw how I format it. I will have transitional pieces. So I will write out how I'm going to transition verbatim because it's important to know for the flow of the lecture. But bullet points are great because for when you know the book, you know yes. the historical yes. background, yes. so yes. that you're not like, oh, what was that again? Mm -hmm. But I would write out verbatim the things that you're like, I can't remember this. Yeah. Or a yeah. quote yeah. or a conclusion or a prayer or whatever. <laughs> or if I botch this and I don't right. say all these parts, they're yes. not going to get yeah. the hour. Yeah, yeah. 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 Something like that. Key, key points. So. Yeah. And on that note, like I'm pretty famous for super minimalistic notes. People ask me for my notes and I kind of laugh at them like, hmm, good luck with that. Uh, you know, because <laughs> most of what I do is actually in my text. Uh, and then I'll just have these bullet points, you know. But that said, uh, is I don't write things, that, but when I am thinking about something, especially if it's a little bit uh, hard to put into words, I find that actually writing it down or I've got the begin. I've got a whole bunch of little writings on various subjects, cluttering up my computer, because I find like writing it down helps me not to. My brain just, you know, I'm a very nonlinear kind of a guy. So writing for me is a discipline where I have to think in a line and put one word after the other. And when I'm in a doing something kind of complicated where I'm not quite sure how I want to navigate it. Writing actually helps me to say, okay, I can say that safely. <laughs> you know, I can read it and say, okay, I can say something like that. I won't say that, I won't read it obviously, but I'll know like, okay, that's a statement that can be safely made. And so after working on it a little, I do stuff like that, especially if you're dealing with something a little theological or something where the words do matter, you know, like you writing it down can help you find the boundaries of what can be said and what you probably shouldn't say, <laughs> you know. So even though I don't do that, I don't write out my lecture, I'm not going to say don't write because sometimes it's actually really helpful, even if you're not a person that naturally would go there. Uh, it's a good discipline. And I would say when you're first starting, you should start there. Just so that you start having a flow, and then you, it gets better, yeah, and, sure you and then you can weed your way, weed your way off. So at least that's what I've seen. People who are just starting might need to start. Uh, I think it builds confidence too yeah. for people that are really new. Yeah. Uh, it, if they've written it all down, they know that yes. okay, I've, yeah. I've done this. Exactly. Uh, you know. Absolutely. Well, and, and I like to not so much write it out what, what I would say, but <clears throat> put it in outline format. Mm -hmm. Because A, I, I may just want to hand it out as notes. That's the other thing about speaking of outline format. Uh, <laughs> if it's a big book, it, it, it's, it is nice to have notes written out no, you know, nicely because like, so you don't, I don't want to cover that. Here's the notes. Yeah. We only have so much. We only got three hours. Okay. We only have two days. Uh, but And also for the future, is that the next time I teach this book, I have well-organized notes. I know what I cover. Yeah. Now, it always changes. It, I'll always go back and yeah. I don't think I want to do this again. Because yes. again, like, like we talked about, there's yeah. something that I wanted to do for this class. And maybe the, the most of it, the information, it's, it's still Ephesians. You know, there's only yeah. so many ways you can go. <laughs> but <laughs> I've got the notes. I know exactly what I did last time, and I can adjust it from there. But at least then I have a copy for myself, mm -hmm. and yeah. I may want to give it out to them. And, that, and that's a point I've actually been criticized on. And it's, it's, it's been on my to-do list for many years is make notes that would be helpful to other people. Uh, and I have notes that are helpful to me, but are unintelligible to other human beings. Uh, you, you know, and uh, I've been challenged on that. I still haven't done anything with it. There's a couple of books that I have notes that are probably coherent enough that I can give them to another person and say, yeah, I, here's my notes. But most of my stuff I don't have that for. And, yeah, I think there is a value to that. I mean, personally, it just gets to be a time thing for me in that that to me is a commitment like, I think I'll write a book. Uh, you know, you're dealing with, uh, you're dealing with something that would be, take such an inordinate amount of time for me that I'm like, I, I tend not to do it. Uh, you know, I tend to study the book and when I'm ready to talk, I'm done, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
And so I don't take that next step of saying, you know, here's for posterity. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but not saying that that's bad, because actually I've had people give me their notes. I have notes from some other teachers on different books that I find very useful because it's like, ah, I see, you know, where you're going here. And, mm -hmm. And it makes me wish I did that, but <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> we will all be our own selves. <laughs>